Well, happy Wednesday night, and um, in this video I thought I was going to showcase some ultra rare action figures. These are not all of my ultra rare action figures. If you watch my channel, you'll see that I have quite a few, but I wanted to showcase these just because I'm not sure if I've ever shown these. So, um, and another reason I wanted to do this video is because a lot of people have been commenting on my Star Trek action figure videos where I have made the claims that these action figures are cheap and easy to get. And a lot of people have rightfully told me that no, a lot of them are worth a lot and a lot of them are hard to get. So in agreement with that, I wanted to show some that are hard to get, in fact, and that have some value. So... That being said, let's look at some ultra rare action figures. Of course, um, the original 1984 Power of the Force Luke in Combat Poncho is a very rare figure. Um, it's a special figure because in all of the Kenner Star Wars action figures, this is the only Luke that wears his sort of Jedi... Um, well, his sort of black, sleeker Jedi outfit that he fought Vader in, they never made another one. And um, what's interesting about the figure is um, he doesn't come with a lightsaber. He comes with this blaster that he got in Jabba's palace. He has a brown poncho, which looks similar to um, the Princess Leia figure that has a green poncho. It's almost the exact same kind of poncho. But the difference is this Luke has a uh, molded on hat, whereas Princess Leia's hat is removable and she has a different blaster. But, um, and I undid the belt so we could just look real quick at the details of his um, outfit underneath. So there's not a lot of paint, but they did add some details. So as you can see, this is the outfit that Luke wore when he faced Vader. The black glove, the ungloved hand, and this the sort of plaster on shirt that he wore. So I just wanted you to see that. This figure goes for anywhere from a hundred dollars to three hundred dollars, depending on you know where you can find it, what condition it's in. It's really hard to get these nowadays. So um, anyway, that's one uh, of my ultra rare figures. And um, I'm kind of cack handed when it comes to putting these things back together. Okay. Next, I want to show you is, oh boy, this one, Darth Talon. Oh boy, I, here's the deal about Darth Talon. This is an extremely popular figure that was only available in a comic pack, which I unwisely opened, um, because I thought the I thought the figures were cool. It came with Cade Skywalker from Star Wars Legacy. With his sort of shotgun blaster, his lightsaber, and an unignited lightsaber hilt. Um, <laughs> I think I have the wrong one on here, actually. I, I don't know. No, it's the right one. Um, and, um, of course, Darth Talon. But, you know, what creeps me out is all the reviews I've seen of Darth Talon make me almost embarrassed to own this figure because there's like some plastic perverts who do reviews of this figure like oh she's so sexy and oh my gosh this is a neat looking action figure but it's a piece of plastic and um but these go for a lot of money too uh, I mean now these are going for upwards of one to two hundred dollars for people to have this figure and I don't even know what they want with it so bad um it's a cool figure. I mean, she's a Twi'lek. She's cool looking. I get it. She looks like Darth Maul. But calm down. And uh, here's the comic it came with. Um, 
and this comic is going for a lot of money now. I mean, the comic itself is, I've seen going for $100 now. And, see, I should have never opened this comic pack. I should have held on to it and sold it. <laughs> but the artwork is really good. And, um, I believe this is a first appearance of Dark Talon. I really do like the artwork in it. It's really cool. And then we get to the big baddie, Darth Talon, and she looks great. She's, you know, like I said, she's a cool looking character. I think some of the reviews make me embarrassed that I've seen on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, some lightsaber chopping up here. Uh, that's one. That's one of the the twins with the 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 silver lightsabers. Yeah. So um, so anyway, yeah. This is the comic. Um, and Kate Skywalker. Which is worth nothing. If you just want the Cade Skywalker figure, I mean, they're practically give the, giving these away. But the Darth Talon, super rare, super ultra rare now, because so by so many people want this in their collection. Um, and put these aside. Net. Um, this is Iron Patriot, but a special Iron Patriot. Um, this is one of the old Marvel Universe collection when they were still mostly the, um, the three and three quarter scale figures. And now they pretty much exclusively moved to the six inch figures. And the only times I see these now are in, uh, bargain stores or people trying to sell them. This has the old top secret classified information envelope. The great Iron Patriot costume, but look, who's that? And let's read the back. When Spider Man warned the Avengers about how dangerous Norman Osborn was, no one listened. He was a has been bad guy, living under the thumb of Tony Stark, locked up in the Thunderbolts Mountain. Now, of course, he's on top of the road living the life of a beloved hero while lining his pockets and spreading his evil. He's got the real heroes on the run, and he's traded up his old Green Goblin costume for a suit of powerful high-tech armor of his own design. So this is Norman Osborn variant Iron Patriot. And that's very cool, and this is very rare. Um, so this is a Norman Osborn. very very cool i really like owning this figure a lot um the next figure i want to show you not exactly ultra rare but pretty doggone rare if you want to complete your rogue one collection you have to find this guy this is galen urso um he played by mads mickelson um was the father of jen urso in Rogue One, which was a really pretty good Star Wars movie, I thought. Um, he was the, the guy who designed the Death Star and also uh, um, secretly put in the uh, the vulnerability that was exploited by the Rebels. So, um, heroic character. He died, you know, gave his life for it. But this is him in his Imperial Scientist uniform. Which is really cool. You might recognize this uniform being worn again by a character in The Mandalorian. Um, but this is... Uh, the figure comes with a little um, mouse robot. from uh, Or mouse droid from uh, that we saw in the Death Star. I don't know how this, you know, is connected to the character. And it also comes with a blaster that we never really see him using. But I guess, you know, if, I mean, if you want to pose him with something... Um, but anyway, if you want to complete your Rogue One collection, it's not hard because most of the Rogue One action figures now are super cheap or super easy to find. But this one, Admiral Raddus, uh, a couple others are really hard to get. 
And um, like I said, if you're a completionist, if you enjoyed the movie like I did and you want to have a collection of Rogue One figures, then you'll need this guy. It doesn't look a lot like Mad Mickelson, but, you know, he has a very unique face. Um, let's talk a little bit about Star Trek real quick. Uh, that's what kind of started this video. There's a few Star Trek action figures that are really uh, rare and worth a lot of money. And these are um, Spencer's Gifts exclusive uh, Sulu and Scotty action figures as seen in... Where No Man Has Gone Before episode, which I also stupidly opened. Because I wanted to display them next to my um, uh, Kirk and Spock in their old uniforms. I thought they looked like a cool, you know, matching group in a way. But, um, but actually, I probably should have just left these on the card. But that's okay. I mean, I'm never going to sell them and I like having them this way. Um, I'm careful. I mean, th they're playmates, so sometimes the head turns, sometimes they don't. <laughs> so, but um, the figures are, are pretty good looking. One kind of weird complaint I've always had about the playmates line in Star Trek is it's really hard to assemble a crew with the same uniform. About the only way you could do it was if you bought the uh, classic Star Trek bridge set. It was a big box. It was a numbered collectible um, that had the whole classic crew. But other than that, I don't know if there was any way you could get all of the characters of, 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 the, of all of the bridge officers. And they're all in the same uniform. Like in the next generation, you have a, the closest you can get is, this, is a mixture of seasons what you know the first seasons or the later seasons <coughs> excuse me or if um i think you could possibly get all of the generations figures but they're all wearing a uniform that actually never made it into the movie it was a concept uniform and those figures are highly un unpopular because they wore a uniform that was never seen so no one wants them uh i like the details on these the phasers are highly detailed unlike a lot of other um playmates figures uh i mean sometimes they had great detail sometimes they didn't the communicators had good detail um it looks like james doing you could see on his badge his engineering design whereas with sulu you could see his command insignia it looks like george takei um phaser tricorder good paint application just i think these figures by themselves now this kirk the only way you could get this captain kirk was to buy the shuttlecraft this was another kind of exclusive figure he's not ultra rare but the only way you could get him is to buy the shuttlecraft so i mean but it's cool to see him and this Spock, I mean, he's not... Like I said, play, these these playmates are not particularly hard to find. But I think these four together look pretty cool. So, um... Like I said, not, exact, not exactly ultra-rare, these two. But if you want to talk about an ultra-rare Star Trek action figure, it has to be Seven of Nine. Now, this figure is... This is the definition of an ultra rare action figure right here. I mean, next to um, Yak Face or some of the last 17 Star Wars or some other uh, figures, this this particular 7 of 9 on the card is extremely valuable and extremely hard to find. If you want a 7 of 9, that's not hard, but you're going to get her either looking like a Borg or some other version of... Or a different scale. But this particular one. This 6 inch. Uh, or not 6 inch. So I guess it's 5 inch scale figure. Uh, I've, I keep this one on the card obviously. Even though the card is old. It's 20 something years old. Um, then here's the other ones in the wave. Picard. Worf. Data. Deanna. And Will Riker. And then. 
if you were dumb enough to open it, you could cut this off. And she comes with an action base, a phaser rifle, a scanner, and a desktop monitor. And I don't know why this figure is so valuable and sought after. It was a Target exclusive. Um, but, you know, she was probably next to the Doctor, probably the most popular character in Star Trek Voyager. Um, I mean, Star Trek Voyager on paper, such a great idea. You know, a ship thrown so many light years away out in the middle of nowhere all by itself left to its own devices but it seems like they never really exercised that wonderful plot but anyway this is her this is seven of nine uh can go anywhere from a hundred to three hundred dollars for an on the card seven of nine so um very rare very nice figure Let me see her earrings. Or was that? Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't earring. That was like Borg stuff. It's been a while. I have to rewatch the show. I remember it's on her hand and it's on here. And then when we see in Picard, she gets it taken off. So. And her very sleek silver uniform. Next is uh, Jedi Temple Guard. This is a Star Wars action figure from the Star Wars Rebels line. Um, oddly enough, this figure is just super rare, and I don't know why. I don't think there's anything particularly special about the figure. He has kind of a scary Friday the 13th mask on. He has a bent, double-edged yellow lightsaber. Uh, like most Star Wars Rebels figures, uh, it was just, you know, in the package, and it was bent, and that's just the way it came. Um, he's got basic five articulation. Nothing super special about the figure. Has a lot of gadgets on his belt. It looks great with the other uh, Star Wars Rebels figures, but um, for some reason this figure is just impossible to find. It's become a rare uh, salt after figure. Uh, there many times you can't even find them available to buy. I don't know why this particular figure became the rare one, but it seems like every wave has you know a chase figure. Every wave has that one super hard to find figure. And this is the case for Jedi Temple Guard for the Star Wars Rebels line. He's a cool looking figure. He is a unique looking figure with the style of, the style of his robes and it is pretty cool. Uh, let me move these. Okay, the next one I want to show you is uh, Nebula. For some reason, this Nebula is really, really rare and really hard to find. If you want to complete your Guardians of the Galaxy, you kind of need Nebula. And the figure was in the same wave. It was called the Daughters of Thanos wave. And you could get either Gamora or Nebula. Gamora is pretty easy to get. Nebula, not so easy. She comes with two accessories. Her pistol, which is um, painted in gold and sort of a gold and platinum. And then she has an alternate arm that you can snap on. I just have her holding it. One complaint of this figure is um, this, where they painted on this plastic with this gold platinum paint. It's sticky because um, it didn't bond very well to the plastic, I don't think. It's not sticky here on the head, but I think the, the type of plastic used on the arm. So, 
uh, that that's kind of annoying. I hate a sticky action figure when the paint isn't on there very well. Um, she has all of the great uh, articulation. A really, really brilliantly sculpted face. Really looks like her from the movie. Uh, one of the uh, I, I character I really who really grew on me by the time we got to Endgame, I really found um, Nebula to be a really charming, cool character. So, um, and uh, I really do like this figure, and that completes, and that way I can have a whole Guardians of the Galaxy set. So, um, But what, like I said, this figure is hard to get. I mean, it, it, it's obviously a, essentially a chase figure for the Guardians of the Galaxy. You can complete, you can get all the characters in some way or another, but this one is the one that will elude you. It seems like. I don't know if they did make another Nebula. They might have made one wearing the um, end game. You know the time, the uh, quantum suits that uh, the Ant Man came up with but i i don't i don't know about that either if uh if they did um the last figure i want to show you is the star wars collector series boba fett um this was in a, a wave that came with luke in his x-wing gear which is really cool princess leia a stormtrooper and then it says look for a collector fleet coming out soon and they're showing the 10 tv4 um, it says instructions, snap rocket pack onto back of figure. Uh, it says a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, the adventure continues with the exciting introduction of exclusive figures from the Star Wars trilogy. Authentically styled with incredible detail, each fully posable 12 inch figure features a realistic outfit, signature weapon and accessories. So first we'll open up the door and you can see the figure handsomely in uh in this case and then on the left it has a description it says boba fett is one of the most notorious bounty hunters in the galaxy because of fett's reputation as a do anything for pay bounty hunter darth vader hires fett to track down and capture solo ship millennium falcon to lure luke skywalker to him in return for helping vader fett is promised han solo as his reward Fett has already made a deal with the slobbering crime lord Jabba the Hutt to turn Han over to him for a handsome bounty. Fett tracks the Falcon to the Bespin system. When Vader arrives at Bespin, he uses Han to test the carbonite freezing process on humans. Even though Han is alive, he is now in a state of frozen suspension. Regardless of Han's condition, Fett takes him to Tatooine and delivers him to Jabba, who displays him as his latest piece of wall sculpture. Luke, Leia, Lando, Chewie, and the droids R2 and C-3PO infiltrate Jabba's palace to free Han. Hopelessly outnumbered, they are captured after decarbonizing Han and brought to the great pit of Carcoon to be fed to the Sarlacc. Luke, Han, and the others make a last desperate attempt to save their lives and manage to overwhelm Jabba's thugs. In the ensuing fight, Boba Fett falls into the deadly maw of the Sarlacc to be the creature's next meal. Authentically styled straight from the Empire Strikes Back, Boba Fett comes outfitted with a Blast Tech EE-3 blaster rifle, wrist lasers, and miniature flamethrower, and his battle-scarred Mandalorian armor complete with helmet cape, scalped Wookiee braids, and jetpack. This special edition 12-inch figure, available for the first time ever, is destined to become a classic collectible. And I will say that this figure is, um, I'm going to let you take a closer look. I do keep this in good condition, but I you can uh, take the figure out to examine it without ruining the display. So we can do that here real quick and look at the details. Um, unlike the Django Fit figure that came out later, um, there's a few things, I mean, his helmet isn't removable because at the time this figure was made, we had no idea what was under this mask. But um, the, the paint and the detail is really good, but although the helmet seems a little small, there's his blaster, which I'm keeping on the card. 
his armor is on there really well. He has these uh, scalp Wookiee braids here. Um, he has his breastplate. Some, some hard plastic. His belt with pouches and pockets that are empty, but they're usable. His wrist gear, his jetpack. He has uh, pockets on his thighs. He has knee pads here, and he has some gadgets in these pockets here. And his boots, which could come off. You can feel his feet inside of them. So, I mean, I'm not going to undress Boba Fett, but um, I'm assuming there's a, you know, a, a body underneath all of this. And um, so the detailing is really, really good. Here's a logo there. And you can see as they, and there's a cape here behind it. Where I don't really want to pull the figure out, but just take my word for it. But the figure is really, really well done. This is highly sought after. Um, and that's why I've chosen to just keep it in the display case where I think it looks better, to say the truth, because I can look at it in all the detail without letting it collect dust or anything it's just always just kind of pristine in this box and just for comparison i just want to show you uh the Django fett that came out later see there's um they're similar they're the exact same height and a lot of similar detailing of course Django's helmet comes off a good realistic face um, similar jetpack um, his little targeting scanner does turn down instead of the blast tech rifle he has blaster pistols that are silver chrome uh, plated that look really nice like the movie uh, this is detachable his little claws he has little cables that go into his uniform uh, this thing always unbuckles for some reason his uh, I had to fix that um, he has the same similar knee pads similar boots um, the, the hard same sort of plastic for the breast breastplate but if you were to you can take all this armor off it's velcroed on and he can be in like a blue shirt similar to the scene when he's speaking with Obi-Wan Kenobi too so this in itself is also a rare figure. So this is Boba Fett. And a uh, good rare action figure. So this one. And now I think of all of the figures I've shown you today. Probably um, these three. are or These four really are the rarest. From this video. Because. I've done some other rare action figure videos, but from this particular video, I think these are the rarest ones. Uh, the hardest ones to get. So they're kind of like, I'm glad to have them in my, in my collection. So um, the rest of these, I think Iron Patriot, I, I don't know how rare this one is. I think you could, you could probably find one if you wanted one bad enough. Um, but this Luke is definitely uh, really, really hard to find now. And um, this guy is just crazy impossible to find. And now everyone wants their own Darth Talon for their own just wicked reasons. Like I said, it is, it's a cool looking figure, but some of these videos just creep me out to watch. <laughs> so, um, and do yourself a favor. If you're looking for this figure, be careful if you're looking on Etsy because some interesting artists have made some really strange fan art uh of her and um it's just stuff you really can't unsee and you just wonder who buys this stuff so um yeah it's i guess to the point where you could almost say this is a controversial action figure but uh now knowing how you know that it is so rare now i'm, I'm glad to own it and 
that being said, I guess that wraps up this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. So until next time, bye.